local archaeologist working on both rural and urban sites in the Northeast between the 17th and 19th centuries, so a pretty long time span. And the historical part of that is what's really defining for me, because what I'm really interested in in this archaeology is the interplay between textual and material sources, between documents and stuff. I'm also a teaching archaeologist, so, and I'm really lucky in that I don't do very much teaching in the classroom. Almost all of my teaching is in the field and in the lab, helping people work through integrating and interpreting their documents and their stuff and how to collect archaeological data in the field. sure how I knew that archaeology was a thing that existed, but it was one of those things that I always wanted to do from the time I was pretty young. Initially, I thought I wanted to study Egyptology, so I did some, I, I got a much more specialized undergraduate degree than anybody should let an undergraduate get and studied a lot of, a lot of Egyptology, but towards the end of my undergraduate career, it became clear that if what I was really interested in was the way that stuff and documents intersect texts and objects that historical archaeology was really the place I should be. So I went to graduate school at Boston University for historical archaeology and uh, have never looked back. A number of people in this series have talked about the way that archaeology opens up different kinds of stories in the past that are um, about people that history hasn't recorded so well. One, and that's a very important part of it, one of the additional facets that I think is so important about the way that archaeology and history interact and um, is that archaeology lets you tell not just stories about more people, but different kinds of stories about different facets of the past. So I didn't actually love a lot of my history classes in high school because they were mostly political and military history. So if political and military history is all of the past that you're exposed to, you can think, well, I'm not really interested in the past. This is not my thing. But when you start to get into social history or the history of how people ate and how they used food to build relationships or how they housed themselves or how they thought about themselves and used stuff to help present themselves to the world. These are all questions that about the past and about history that archaeology can illuminate. And so by being able to ask these different range of questions, you can make the past interesting and relatable and understandable to a whole wider range of people. I couldn't pick one most exciting thing, so I'm going to talk about two. They're both from Plymouth, Massachusetts, and what they have in common is that it was not immediately clear upon excavation that they qualified as the most exciting thing you've ever found. Uh, they both took a little additional work to become the most exciting thing we've ever found. The first is essentially a hole in the ground. We were digging a single excavation unit, about a three foot by six foot hole in the ground, and we'd gotten to the bottom in most of it, sterile, layers, no more artifacts, no more human activity. But a third of the end of it was a pit, something that a hole that people had dug in the past and then in the past filled back in again. So we were following good archaeological stratigraphic procedure and removing the dirt from this ancient hole in the ground. It wasn't very exciting stuff coming out of it, very, very few artifacts, um, but we're documenting and recording and we eventually get to the bottom and we end the season only later in the lab doing analysis of the very little stuff that came out of this did it become clear that this is probably a very old hole in the ground so this was a 17th century hole in the ground that had been filled in not too much later than the 17th century and so that was enough to go back and say we need to bigger a bigger picture of this so we went back and opened up more excavation units around that and it became clear that this was the edge of a house that had been cut into the hillside and in fact had a deeply buried floor from the mid early to mid 17th century so the first thing was a hole in the ground um, that turned out to be a 17th century house the second thing also in Plymouth, we were working on a 19th century house lot. And 
we were coming down on something this that was um, organic and very fragile, kind of rectangular. Um, we could see that it seemed to have like bits of leather on it. Um, we thought maybe it was a box, like maybe a leather covered box, maybe a book. Um, all we could tell was that it was very delicate. So we decided not to fully excavate it in the field. We, we scooped it out by, you know, getting a sheet of metal under it and a bunch of surrounding dirt, lifted it out, sent the whole block off to the lab, to the conservator to take a look at. Um, and he calls back a day or two later and he says, wow, that stack of daguerreotypes you sent me is really fascinating. So what we had uncovered was a stack of four little leather cases that hold an early, a mid 19th century or late 19th century photograph, daguerreotypes, two daguerreotypes and two what turned out to be ambrotypes, slightly different technology, but second half of the 19th century photographs. And they were in a little stack um, tied up with a ribbon of human hair on top. And these had been buried with a bunch of other personal items in an intentionally dug pit in somebody's backyard as some kind of household memorial cache um, of some sort. And these were, these and the other objects around them were very carefully excavated um, by a couple of UMass Boston uh, graduate students and uh, worked on by our conservator. Thankfully, not by me. I'm a shovel archeologist. I would have destroyed these things instantly so a good thing that I was just, I was just supervising, but the most interesting thing I've ever supervised coming out of the ground is this stack of daguerreotypes. One of the great things about archeology span is that as a career, it's really varied. People know about archeologists who teach at universities and they probably know that there are archaeologists who work at museums but there are also archaeologists who work for the park service and there are archaeologists who work for the highway department and there are archaeologists who work with um, creating educational materials for kindergarten to 12th grade students so the kinds of work that people do within archaeology can be really really varied and I think that's important for people to realize and Additionally, the time periods and the types of analysis and the specialties that people work on are really varied. Some of these are really technical, you know, lab analysis of the material composition of ancient metals. And some of these are much more humanistic and artistic and interpretive. And all of this fits within archaeology. So archaeology is a field that encompasses a lot of different skills and activities um, and does that all in service of trying to explain the human past to better and um, to get make it relatable to more people in the present.